G'day guys, you're back with Miracle Max. You're gonna have to excuse the background noise. It's really windy here today. In fact, I just saw a chicken lay the same egg twice. Strange but true. Well, not really true. Well, actually, I just made it up. Never mind, it is super windy here today, so I apologize if the sound quality isn't as auspicious as per normal. Max, stop making up excuses. Get back to the video. So today we're going to have a look at a leaf blower, an Echo PB1000, if the roof doesn't take off in the meantime. Anyway, let's get into it. This Echo leaf blower was given to me by a regular customer. They said it didn't go. If I could get it up and running, I could keep it. Well, I hope to keep it. Let's get it up and running. Of course, the question on everyone's mind is, will this thing go? Let's give it a try, shall we? Let's start the launch sequence. Ten, Systems go. Nine, eight, give it just seven, a little bit of primage. Six, five, Choke four, in on position. Three, two, and pull the lever. One, fire. Nobody home, of course. So before we go gung-ho and start throwing parts at this little leaf blower, let's start with a diagnostic path. What do we need to make an engine start? Well, firstly, we need spark. Then we need fuel. Air is also important. And lastly, that some people forget about is the mechanical side of things. Is there correct compression? Now, what I mean by correct compression is that the valve timing in the case of a four stroke, of course, is correct um, to give co correct compression. Two stroke in this case, that doesn't necessarily apply. But firstly, let's look at spark. Testing for spark in this case is not overly hard. We simply have to have a look and see if the spark plug is producing a spark. So we're gonna pull the lead off of here and then we'll remove our spark plug. It does look pretty old and dodgy, so we'll pull it off and have a look. In this case, it's a 19 millimeter or three quarter socket that's gonna fit this particular spark plug. As with any diagnosis, the most important part is a good visual. Have a really close look at the thing, see what it looks like. Now in this particular case, there's a nice square edge on there. It doesn't look, uh, there's a bit of carbon and stuff floating around in there. But uh, anyway, proof in the pudding is the tasting, they say. So let's see if we can get a spark out of this bad boy. Normally the spark plug would be located in the head and that would be the earth path for the spark plug. But in this particular case, we've got it out of the head. Therefore, we need to provide some sort of external earthing, which I'm gonna do here with my little bit of wire. I'll just stick it up against the head fins that are located in here. That should be good enough. Now we're looking for a spark here. Don't know about you, but I can't really see a spark there. But is it the spark plug that's failed or is it the ignition system? Let's just replace it with another spark plug. Now, although it's not the correct spark plug, it should be enough to give us a nice blue spark there. Let's see what happens. You know, I can't see a spark there, guys. We may have a spark issue. Or it could be a switch issue. I think we need to stick it on the bench and find out what's going on. At this point in time, we can honestly say that we have no spark. So that's what we'll be chasing first. You might have to hold on to someone because it appears to be dark time. That's right, I've turned off all the lights and shut the workshop door. The main reason is because I wasn't happy with the spark situation that we talked about. So what I've done is I've changed my spark plug, I've changed the lead position, and of course, I've gone to dark mode. I just want you guys to have a look and see if you can see if there's a spark or not before I start ripping things apart. Now, hang on to your hats. So I don't know about you guys, but I saw a nice clear blue spark. So I may have misjudged or misdiagnosed that first thing simply because I couldn't see it properly. So let's go back to our diagnostic chart. So after re-examining the facts and the evidence that we've now found, we can get rid of that cross, can't we? Instead, we need to put a tick there. 
And there we have it. We've got part of our diagnostic path sorted. We do in fact have spark now. Even though we couldn't quite see it before, we definitely have spark. Okay, what's next? We need to consider fuel. Not only is there fuel in the tank, is it of good quality? How many of these power tools are left the entire year or six months at least with fuel in their tank that has now gone stale? Let's check out what this bad boy has. So we'll just check our fuel. Level looks okay. <laughs> Ooh wee, that there is some strong moonshine. So it's clear we need to get rid of that brew and stick in some correctly mixed two-stroke fuel. One thing I did notice when I was pouring out the fuel is that it was very yellow in colour, like super yellow. And that sometimes indicates that someone has done the wrong oil fuel mix, making it very oily. But generally speaking, you would find the spark plug would be very oily. But we don't really see that in this case, do we? Anyway, out with the old, in with the new. I'm not going to put in too much, just enough to hopefully get the thing up and running. Yeah, it's probably going to do it, I'd imagine. See how we go with that. Oh, much better. Much better aroma. Mm, beautiful. A much better year, 2020. Uh, nah, not really. It hasn't been a good year, has it? Well, for the fuel, it's okay. Let's head back to the whiteboard. Okay, so that's got fuel sorted. Well, the condition of the fuel and the level, that's all good. But what we need to do now is check out if the fuel is going down the carby. And to tie in with that, we will check our next triangle of fire, and that will be air. One of the most important things that often gets forgotten is the air filter. Now this fella is vitally important for the running of the engine. Just keep in mind, what's this thing doing? Well, it's going through dirt, it's going through leaves, etc. And the poor old air filter has to suck in clean air, in theory, to make the engine operate. So let's pull that off and have a look at it. Well, look, it's actually not too bad. It's uh, got a little bit of grot on there, but it's certainly not packed with dirt. Whoops. Now it is. There we go, found the little runaway. But look, it's actually not too bad. It should be, you know, a cleaner colour than that. But it's certainly not absolutely chockers, as you might expect. What I'm going to do is run it without this filter, then that way it will cut out any air trappings or blockages as a result of a block filter. Another thing we need to observe or make sure that it's operating correctly is the choke. And this simply is a flap that goes over the entrance to the carby, making the mixture richer or less air in this particular case. So that seems to be operating okay, doesn't it? Hmm, what else could be a problem? Well, what I think we should do right now is see if we can get this thing to start now that we've got new fuel in it. I'm going to replace the spark plug when the shops are open, but for now, I might just tidy up this little bad boy and see if we can get it up and running, because I did see a spark come out there before, so eh, it might work. Let's give it a try. As stated, I'm going to replace this spark plug but in the meantime, I'd like to try and get this engine up and running. So what I've done is I've cleaned the area around here with a bit of engine start, just blown it out. And I have tidied up these electrodes with uh, my points foil. And I've also regapped it according to the manufacturer's specs, which is 26 thou or 0.65 of a millimetre. But there's one thing I want to do before I pop this spark plug back in. The last thing I want to check is correct compression and just make sure that the compression that I have is good enough to make the engine start. How can I do that simply without making it too complex? Easy peasy. Since the spark plug is out already, it's easy to find out if you have reasonable sort of compression. It's a rule of thumb. How do you do that? Well, like you use your thumb. First things first, we need to make sure that the ignition switch is in the off position so that we don't get a shock. Get our plug lead out of the road. Put our thumb over the hole and simply pull. You can hear the compression and you can feel it against your thumb. So I know roughly this engine should have enough compression to start. It's not an ideal test, but look, I think it's okay. I reckon there's plenty of compression in there. So let's chuck in the spark plug and see what happens. Give her a bit of the old Titan. One ugga dugger, two ugga duggers. So let's quickly review what we've done. For starters, it appeared that we didn't have spark, but after carefully examining it, and I've cleaned up the spark plug, etc., it appears that we have spark, doesn't it? I've replaced the fuel in it to make sure that that is brand new and correctly mixed. 
I've checked the air filter. I'm going to leave the filter out and make sure that it is breathing correctly. The choke system appears to be working okay. And finally, we have uh, compression that appears to be okay. All we have to do now is see if it'll start. Of course, I want to replace that spark plug and maybe touch up some of the mixtures as well. But we'll see if the thing starts firstly. Let's see if we can get this thing running by giving it the old heave ho. I've got my ignition in the up position. That's on. I've got my choke on here. I've also primed it several times. And so all we have to do now is pull it and in theory it should go. Hold the lever down of course. Oh, that sounded promising. Get rid of just a touch of choke. adjustments on the high and low screws here perhaps by the sound of things but it's running steady there Nettie let's just see which is our high screw can't remember which Sound too bad, I reckon. Pretty uh, quick response. Well, that sounds pretty sweet in my books. So I've turned it off via the switch. So let's just see if we can start it again. On. Oh, noise! Just noise. Yeah, of course the worst part's the road test, means I've got to do some work. Yeah. We now have all the elements to make the engine run. We have spark, we have fuel, we have air and of course correct compression. That's why the thing is up and running. As part of maintenance I'm going to replace the spark plug as well as that air filter. Why didn't it run in the beginning? Well I'd say it was because of that phew, stinky fuel, it was off, it was stale, it was time to get out of there. If you have a look at the owner's manual, it suggests that you only keep enough fuel for around about three months. I'm sure most people by the end of the season wouldn't change their fuel at all. And of course, probably six months to the next time that you actually do this on a regular basis, the fuel starts to get stale and eventually, phew, it stinks. And of course the engine won't run. I hope that this video was helpful for you today, guys. Having a look at an Echo PB1000 leaf blower, she's up and running. And guess what? I scored myself a leaf blower. If you did enjoy this video today and you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, give it a like and feel free to comment down below. Of course, don't forget about that notification bell. You don't want to miss any future videos, do you? Well, of course not. So, until next time guys, this is Miracle Max signing off. I will catch you later.